Hello everybody, this is Dr. Nadeem. We are with Neelam Path Lectures, the Pursue series. As you are aware, all our lectures are available on YouTube, which is, you can download them, you can view them at your convenience. And we have a Telegram group where, which you can join, which is very good for accessing all lecture related information. We have a Google Drive where the PDF of all the lectures are available. These are the disclaimers. We are with phase three, which is recorded pathology lecture. This is convenient for the teachers, the students and the organizers. And today we have pursued 26 W, which is dermatopathology. And we are streaming from Kolkata, from the OnQuest laboratory, as well as from Charnak hospital. And to talk on today's topic, which is deposition di disorders of skin, we have Dr. Debo Jyoti Ghosh, who is an MBBS from Calcutta and MD in pathology. Presently is a consultant pathologist and histopathologist at the famous Charnak Hospital and the Onquest Laboratories, Kolkata. His areas of interest being histopathology and cytopathology. He's got multiple publications in various journals. So with this, I would request Dr. Debo Jyoti Ghosh, sir, please start your lecture on deposition disorders of skin. All yours. Thank you so much. Today's talk is on deposition disorders of skin. The deposition disorders we will look into are amyloidosis, porphyria, lipoid proteinosis, colloid milia, uchronosis, and cutaneous gout. First, primary cutaneous amyloidosis. The clinical features are either macular, biphasic, or nodular. Macular is moderately pruritic dark brown papules in reticulated or rippled pattern, symmetric over upper back and arms, retinoid intensely pruritic discrete firm hyperkeratotic plaques and papules of anterior sheens and extensor forearm, and biphasic is both retinoid and macular forms are present the same person. Looking into the pictures of cutaneous amyloidosis, this is a first it's a amyloidosis of trunk you can see on the left and the right is amyloidosis of face. The microscopic description when we get a skin biopsy for amyloidosis of skin. The primary amyloidosis, there are masses of eosinophilic amorphous fissured material in dermis and subcutaneous tissue. Macular amyloidosis, there are focal or small amounts of eosinophilic faceted deposits in papillary dermis. Also, there is pigment incontinence. Lichenoid amyloidosis, hyperkeratosis, acanthosis, basal hydrophic degeneration, small eosinophilic globules in papillary dermis. Also, mild chronic inflammatory cells are present with pigment incontinence. The microscopic images, as you can see, the eosinophilic deposits along with the chronic inflammatory cells and there are fissuring in the dermis. The positive stains, which we do in primary cutaneous amyloidosis, uh, the Congo red, which shows apple green birefringence under polarized light, methyl or chrysal violet, thioflavin T with examination using a fluorescence microscope. In electron microscopy, the description is like straight non branching amyloid filaments are seen with a diameter of 6 to 10 nanometer, showing a hollow core on cross section. Infrared microscopy reveals a beta pleated anti parallel configuration. Pictures on the right show the Congo red, Congo red staining and along with this thioflavin T staining with fluorescent microscopy. Now coming into cutaneous porphyria. This is a non-inflammatory blistering disorder due to disturbance of porphyrin metabolism. Porphyrins are mainly present in hemoglobin, myoglobin and cytochromes. What are the clinical features of cutaneous porphyria? There is urtic area and vesicles that heal with scarring and are exacerbated by sunlight. Types are acute intermittent. There is a congenital anthropoietic type, hepatoanthropoietic porphyria, and there is porphyria cutanea tarda, and there is a mixed form. Acute intermittent porphyria is the second most common type of porphyria, but still rare. Autosomal dominant metabolic disorder with porphobilinogen deaminase deficiency is typically asymptomatic but triggered by hormones, drugs, and dietary changes. Presence with abdominal pain or psychiatric symptoms, skin is typically not involved in acute intermittent porphyria. 
Congenital erythropoietic porphyria is a rare autosomal recessive disease with mutation in the uroporphyrinogen 3 synthase gene leading to the porphyrin accumulation in many tissues with marked skin photosensitivity, hemolytic anemia with splenomegaly and decreased life expectancy. Coming into hepatoerythropoietic porphyria, this is also rare. Only less than 50 cases have been reported so far. It's an autosomal recessive form of porphyria cutinea tarda with a markedly deficient activity of uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase. It manifests during infancy or early childhood with extreme photosensitivity, screen fragility in sun exposed areas, hypertrichosis, erythrodontia, and pink urine may resemble child abuse. Porphyria cutanea tarda, most frequent type of porphyria, autosomal dominant disorder due to catalytic deficiency of uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase, the fifth enzyme in heme biosynthesis, and there is a reduced complement deposition during clinical remission. Looking into the pictures of porphyria cutanea tarda, as you can see on the back of the hand, these are the porphyria cutanea tarda features, and the below picture shows the hepatoerythropoietic type of porphyria clinical features as you can see on the face and also on the hands. If you are doing a skin biopsy, the histologic description regarding porphyria cutanea, cutaneous deposition is subepidermal vesicle. There is a marked thickening of superficial dermal vessels. They may appear rigid. There is no or minimal inflammation. In porphyria cutanea tarda, there is a dermal papilla protrudes into the bulla with a festoon pattern. Roof of blister has eosinophilic, pass positive, and diastase resistant linear globules. As you can see in the picture, there is a porphyria cutanea tarda. It's associated with an HIV patient. There is a sub epidermal bulla formation, has resulted in the loss of the epidermis. Now, coming into colloid milium, colloid milium is a rare condition characterized by the dome-shaped translucent papules and dermal colloid deposition. Four variants have been recognized, the adult, the juvenile, the pigmented, and the nodular colloid milium. Colloid milium is a degenerative condition linked to excessive sun exposure and possibly exposure to petroleum products and hydroquinone. The origin of the colloid deposition in the dermis is not certain, but it is thought to be due to degeneration of the elastic fibers in the adult form and due to degeneration of UV transformed keratinocytes in the juvenile form. The most frequently involved sites for colloid milium are the face especially around the orbits, the back of the hands, the dorsum of the hands, the back and sides of the neck and ears. The small dermal papules appear, which are 1 to 2 millimeter in diameter. It's a yellowish, brown and sometimes translucent. They develop slowly and more or less symmetrically in irregular groups in areas exposed to sunlight. They feel soft and may release their gelatinous contents when punctured. Although colloid milium may become more severe and more extensive over the years, most cases reach their maximum development within three years and then remain unchanged. As you can see in the picture, is an adult colloid milium. It's a rare in a rare cutaneous deposition disorder. It is characterized by multiple translucent papules on the sun exposed areas. This is the back of the hand. For always the diagnosis of full thickness, skin biopsies is necessary. But also the patient's history is very much important. Histology as the picture clearly defines, it reveals the deposition of pale eosinophilic homogeneous material which is containing artifactual fissures 
in the dermal papilla. Special studies for colloid milium. Staining is always positive for pass. Congo red and crystal violet may also be positive. In adult type colloid medium, as the below pictures demonstrate, there is often a grain zone with sub epidermal sparing of the papillary dermis and solar elastosis. There is sparing of the adnescent structures. The adnescent structures are not involved by colloid medium. Now, coming into lipoid proteinosis. Lipoid proteinosis is an autosomal recessive condition caused by mutations in the ECM1 extracellular matrix 1 gene which leads to deposits of highly material in the skin and mucosal surfaces. Men and women are equally affected. Typically occurs in consanguineous families, rarely only a few hundred known patients. There is an increased incidence in South Africa likely due to founder mutation. The clinical features of lipoid proteinosis there is a hoarse cry or it's a hoarse voice of an infant. The papules on the eyelid margins which are also known as moliniform blepharosis. Vesicles with hemorrhagic crust on skin and oral mucosa in early lesions. Lesions involve into waxy yellowish white papules, nodules or plaques. There is a poor wound healing. Calcification is brain can occur particularly bean shaped calcifications above the pituitary fossa. There can be attacks of seizures. Behavioral issues are, has also been demonstrated like memory impairment, paranoia, aggressive behavior, hallucinations can occur and lack of fear involvement of the amygdala. Poor dental hygiene, there can be upper respiratory tract infections, shortened tongue, difficulty in protruding tongue and patchy alopecia. These are all the clinical features of all the systemic manifestations. But if we, we are looking into the cutaneous part in our talk, so if we go into the pictures of the clinical features which manifest on the skin, these are the beaded papules over bilateral eyelids. And on the right hand side is the waxy papules over back of the forearm. If you go into the histology of lipoid proteinosis, there is a deposition of a eosinophilic homogeneous material in the dermis. The overlying epidermis may be papillomatosis, papillomatose, the material surrounds the blood vessels and the adnexa. You need to do some stains for that, special stains like PAS and PAS-T which are generally positive. The negative stains are Congo red and you can do the immunofluorescence for the ECM1 which will be negative because ECM1 gene is mutated. Now coming into hoop chronosis. These are disorders characterized by blue-gray to black pigmentation due to deposition of ochre colored pigment in connective tissues. Two main forms are manifested. One is alcaptonuria or there is an endogenous chronosis which is due to homogenesis 1 to dioxygenase deficiency and there is an exogenous chronosis which occurs due to overuse of topical hydroquinone and other medicaments. Coming into the pathophysiology of alcaptonuria. Alcaptonuria is an inborn error of tyrosine metabolism secondary to the autosomal recessive loss of function mutations in homogenesis, deoxygenase enzyme gene. Resultant deficiency of the homogenesis 1 to deoxygenase leads to the accumulation of homogenesic acid and there is an eventual deposition in collagen rich tissue. Long term deposition leads to degenerative arthritis, can lead to cardiac valvulopathy, 
renal disease and the oculocutaneous pigmentation. Pathophysiology of exogenous uchronosis. So localized inhibition of homogenesis 1-2 deoxygenase primarily by topical application of phenol containing compounds particularly hydroquinone. There is a deposition and polymerization of homogenesis acid and on collagen and elastic fibers. Alkaptonuria is an autosomal recessive loss of function mutations in HGD or HGO gene and the exogenous uchronosis etiology is mainly prolonged use of hydroxyquinone. A less common associations include anti-malarials, phenol, resorcinol, quinone injections, mercury and picric acid. The clinical features of alkaptinuria has multiple clinical spectrum. Uchronosis, homogenesis, aciduria, and uchronotic osteoarthropathy are called the triad of alkaptinuria. Uchronosis commonly presents in the third or fourth decade, which develops as the deposition of benzoquinone acetate in both extra and intracellular connective tissue. Finally, uchronotic arthropathy develops as an accumulation of homogenesis acid polymer within hyaline articular cartilage. The clinical features are secondary to uchronosis. Generally, there is a gray pigmentation. The general features are gray pigmentation in the ear cartilage or the sclera, also skin dis discoloration. Bone and joint, there is a lumbar pain, ankylosis, arthritis leading to joint effusions. There is a decreased joint mobility. Impaired spinal and thoracic mobility may lead to permanent disability. There is also an increase in the prevalence of fractures secondary to osteopenia. The respiratory system, there is a decreased respiratory reserve and restrictive lung disease. Cardiac system, there is a valvular heart disease like aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation, second mitral valve stenosis, cardiac arrhythmias, eventually heart failure and increase in incidence of coronary artery disease. Neurological can be peripheral neuropathy, tinnitus, diplopia, and an increased incidence of stroke. Metabolic increase in the incidence of renal, gallbladder, and prostatic stones. As you can see in the pictures, the first picture demonstrates the forearm macules due to the uchronosis in the dermis. Then there is a pigmented knee cartilage and there is uchronosis in the ear pinna in this ear cartilage. The histologic features of uchronosis are similar in both alkaptinuria and exogenous uchronosis. The early changes include homogenization of collagen and regenerating elastotic fibers. The yellow brown is banana shaped sickled or round uchronotic bodies deposit in the connective tissue. Occasional uchronotic bodies may be seen in direct continuity with collagen or elastic fibers. In cases of exogenous uchronosis, there is an extensive solar elastosis like change noted in the interfollicular distribution. There is decreased basal keratinocyte pigmentation. Occasionally, uchronotic bodies are seen in association with colloid medium and are designated pigmented colloid medium. Granulometer's reaction has also been reported. Similar uchronotic bodies are seen in the connective tissues of cardiac, scleral, and bony tissue when involved. The histologic pictures of uchronotic bodies. As you can see, these are the uchronotic bodies and the, these are embedded in elastosis. Uchronotic bodies can be stained with Vera Van Gieson stain. It will take this blackish color and there is a pigmented uchronosis associated with colloid medium. You can see in the second picture on the right.
The positive stains in case of chronosis is a methylene blue, variable were of Bangison stain. The negative stains are, are pearl stain, iron stain, Fontana mason. In electron microscopy, there is an electron dense material within the elastic fibers. Degeneration of elastic fibers with fragmentation, clearing, and a moth eaten appearance. Now, coming into cutaneous gout, gout has multiple manifestations. We'll concentrate on the cutaneous manifestations of gout in this talk. It's a common systemic disorder caused due to the abnormal uric acid metabolism. Uric acid crystallizes and then gets deposited in the joints, resulting in the recurrent arthritis. Chronic cutaneous gout is characterized by firm erythematous nodules, which are called as tophi, present interdermally or in subcutaneous tissue. They usually occur in avascular tissue over the years, olecranon, prepatellar varsa, or over acral areas around the joints. As you can see in the pictures, from A to D, there is a multiple yellowish to red nodules with underlying erythema over both forearms and lower legs involving the periarticular and the non-articular regions. Coming to the histologic pictures, you can see in the three pictures, there is an amorphous crystalline material in the dermis. This is surrounded by a granulomatous inflammation. Now coming to the polarized microscopic part in cases of gout, or cutaneous gout, polarized microscopy reveals multiple needle-like crystals which were negatively birefringent. This is how we can diagnose cutaneous gout by skin biopsy and polarized, followed by polarized microscopy. Thank you very much. These were the uh, clinic, uh, cutaneous manifestations which we concentrated upon. Most of these had other systemic manifestations which I didn't stress upon, especially gout. It has a wide spectrum of manifestations leading to arthritis and uh, other systemic diseases. I have only stressed upon the cutaneous portion here as it was a talk regarding cutaneous deposition of these disorders. These are my references. Thank you once again.